while SpaceX prepares to launch between 165 and 170 Falcon 9 rockets in 2025, NASA is still trying to explain why it spent $93 billion on a rocket that flies once every few years, costs $4.1 billion per launch, and still struggles to meet its own timelines. They insisted the legacy system was the only path forward, the necessary backbone of American spaceflight. Yet here is the truth they buried. SpaceX is on track track to launch more rockets in one single year than every other nation on Earth combined. Ask yourself right now, how much do you think they wasted defending their failed systems before accepting that a private company, led by Elon Musk, had already won the race to orbit? The system didn't break in one catastrophic moment, it collapsed slowly over years because institutional arrogance overruled engineering warnings. Your tax dollars paid for that failure, funding decades of complacency that started by treating reusability as a gimmick instead of an operational mandate. While SpaceX turned Falcon 9 boosters around in days, the old Space Shuttle program celebrated a six-month turnaround as a major achievement, training the public to accept slow schedules and bloated budgets as normal. This set the stage for the true outrage, because engineers knew this would fail, but their warnings were deliberately ignored. The evidence of technical superiority is undeniable when you look at the human systems designed to reach orbit, contrasting the work of innovators versus contractors. NASA paid more than $5 billion to Boeing for the Starliner capsule, a crew vehicle that, by NASA's own Inspector General reports, contained over 1,000 critical software bugs during its early test flights. Meanwhile, SpaceX's Crew Dragon, built on a rapid iteration philosophy, flew astronauts flawlessly on its very first operational mission with only 47 minor bugs noted in the subsequent review. That simple comparison shows the true value of relentless engineering discipline against contractor complacency. The institutional failure that enabled that technical inferiority came down to ignoring the near misses they desperately tried to hide. If just one engineer had been listened to, the entire SLS program's eventual collapse could have been avoided back in 2014, when propulsion teams warned it would fall far behind commercial rivals. That voice was ignored, just as the warnings about foam shedding and O-rings were ignored during the shuttle era, creating a clear paper trail of negligence that led directly to disaster. It wasn't just a mistake, it was an active choice to prioritize political contracts over safety and efficiency. The vindication for those ignored engineers came when the failure dynamics were put into a brutal head-to-head -head comparison, speed of correction versus speed of bureaucracy. In 2022, one Falcon 9 booster suffered a brief landing burn issue, but instead of hiding it or shutting down the program, SpaceX fixed the problem entirely in days, quickly implementing the software update across the entire fleet. Had that same issue occurred on a government-owned rocket, the entire fleet would have been grounded for months, while bureaucratic committees wrote reports and debated blame. While Falcon 9 kept flying, Russia kept losing Soyuz modules to increasingly frequent coolant leaks, exposing the fragility of aging, non-reusable state programs. While Falcon 9 captured nearly 90% of the commercial market, China suffered multiple unpredictable long-march upper-stage failures, proving that brute forcing capacity without reusability and disciplined iteration is a failing strategy. This escalating comparison culminates in the humiliation of the old guard, the 2025 launch cadence target. SpaceX's vice president of launch casually announced they were targeting 165 to 170 orbital launches for Falcon 9, a number so extreme it represented a verdict on the slow pace of every competitor. While Falcon 9 launches twice per week, landing boosters like clockwork and turning one around in as little as nine days, the massive $4.1 billion per launch SLS might fly only once every two years. This is no longer a race, it is industrial scale domination, and the sheer volume of Falcon 9 flights ensures that the rocket collects data and refines reusability at a rate no other company can ever match. 
But that's not even the worst part. Wait until you hear W. Cho knew about this failure and still allowed it to continue. The institutional failure runs deep because the analysts saw the collapse coming years in advance. Inside reports and congressional testimony shielded from the public eye contain the explicit warning, commercial launch cadence will exceed government capabilities by an order of magnitude by 2025. They knew the gap was forming, but they kept funding the broken cost plus system anyway, allowing billions in contracts to flow to contractors like Boeing and maintaining the illusion of competition. They chose to defend political contracts instead of engineering results. Now we enter the jackpot phase, where every fear the taxpayer had is confirmed with brutal, undeniable data delivered rapid fire like justice finally catching up. First, the cost exposure. NASA's Space Launch System costs $4.1 billion per launch, while SpaceX's flight-proven Falcon 9 costs just $67 million. SpaceX could launch 61 Falcon 9 missions for the price of one SLS mission, and Falcon 9 will launch 170 times this year, flying more volume than the rest of the world combined. This isn't competition. This is the reality of efficiency punishing waste. Second, the cover-up. For years, NASA leadership pretended Falcon 9 was not a threat to SLS, insisting reusability was a gimmick that could not sustain long-term reliability. They intentionally buried internal cadence projections, telling Congress what they wanted to hear while SpaceX hit over 200 consecutive successful booster landings and Crew Dragon flew astronauts with flawless precision. The truth they tried to hide is that Falcon 9 had already replaced SLS for 99% of mission profiles, leaving the $93 billion behemoth an expensive, single-use monument to bureaucratic inertia. Third, the technical revolution. The true technical superiority lies in a system built for correction rather than unreachable perfection. SpaceX achieved this unmatched 170 launch target through relentless vertical integration. They don't wait for slow suppliers manufacturing up to 70 Starlink satellites per week, ensuring boosters are ready and payloads are waiting, eliminating all external delays. While NASA lost months because of just one misaligned sensor on Artemis II, freezing the entire mission, SpaceX's launch pads clear the rocket and prepare for the next mission in hours. This production recovery synergy turned Falcon 9 into a launch factory, not just a vehicle. Fourth, the China threat humiliation. China hoped to catch up to the United States in deep space and launch capability by 2030. But Falcon 9's 165-170 launch cadence put SpaceX six years ahead of China's entire national program. China launched 67 rockets in 2024. SpaceX plans nearly three times that volume in 2025 alone, obliterating any pretense of a close competitive race. This dominance is a strategic reality, proving that state-sponsored brute force cannot beat the speed and economics of private innovation. Fifth, the ongoing consequences, and here's what they're still doing today, continuing to repeat the same core mistakes, even now, the government is still spending billions on slow, outdated systems that cannot compete, rewriting SLS schedules and defending Starliner's troubled legacy. Boeing, despite receiving $5 billion in contracts, still hasn't delivered Starliner to fully reliable operational status, a painful comparison to Crew Dragon's immediate success. Your money is still funding this ongoing waste while SpaceX flies the world into orbit every two days. The final lesson is the one they never wanted you to hear. Reality rewards engineering and punishes bureaucratic delay. SpaceX is preparing to fly up to 170 Falcon 9 missions in 2025, a brutal tempo that exposes every flaw, every cost overrun, and every lie of the old system like sunlight hitting rot. While nations and legacy contractors struggle to launch once a month, Falcon 9 launches twice a week. This is not just a commercial victory, it is a reckoning where the innovative private sector has completely defeated the incompetent, wasteful, institutional old guard. 
But do not think for a moment the threat is over or the problem is fixed. Because the institutions responsible for this colossal $93 billion collapse are still wasting money, still repeating the same mistakes, and still ignoring the next set of warnings, laying the groundwork for the next broken program. SpaceX won, but the culture of waste they fought against is still an active threat today.